Hello again, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in the capital of British Columbia in Western Canada. I hope that all of you have had a lovely week. I hope your weekend is off to an ex excellent start. Uh, welcome to our students, uh, our members, Huang Yani, Karem, nice to see you in this class as well. Uh, Java Akira, Salam, welcome to our subscribers, viewers. This is a subscribers chat class. Everybody who has subscribed to our YouTube channel can join in on the fun. If you haven't and you're studying for the IELTS, it's a great idea to subscribe to our channel, hit that notification button uh, so you know when these live classes are happening. In this class, everyone, we are looking at the IELTS listening uh, section. We are uh, specifically going to focus on part three and part four. Those are the final two parts, the more challenging parts. The listening section is made up of four parts. Each one takes about 10 minutes of listening and answering questions. Uh, today's topics will be on taxes and the famous scientist Isaac Newton. Okay, uh, We know these topics because last week we did listening part one and part two of this exam and we reviewed the topics of parts three and four. If you missed last week's um, lesson, it's okay. Uh, you will have no problems in this class because these parts can be done uh, separately. Um, all of this listening material, if you'd like to catch up, if you'd like to review it, it is coming from our websites, uh, aehelp.com for academic IELTS, uh, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Our websites are the textbooks and learning materials for these live classes, so uh, make sure to visit us there. This is aehelp.com. We use these websites for interactivity to talk to our students. You can join our premium IELTS package by clicking that big red button that's just above my head there. It's a one-time payment. You get lifetime access um, and uh, we are an IDP affiliate. We're a British Council partner and an IELTS test registration center. So you are in great um, hands with us. Uh, and for the general IELTS, um, you can check us out uh, at gieltshelp.com. The listening parts of the exams are going to be the same on these websites because the listening and speaking section of the IELTS exam are the same for the academic and general versions of the test. So again, if you're a general IELTS student, you want to go to gieltshelp.com and click that big red button uh, there. Um, when you do that, uh, you can use the discount code MARK9 for an extra 10% discount, okay, uh, to give you a little bit uh, more uh, help. And we're going to use the website in just a moment to listen to the audio for the listening, and then we'll do uh, strategies for the listening while uh, we are um, uh, listening to the audio and answering the questions. You can of course download our apps. We have apps that link to the websites for your phone, um, Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. Get those from your app stores, link them and use them. Uh, Instagram, IELTS underscore A help, G IELTS Help for our schedules. If you have questions, don't be shy, send me an email, um, adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. Now, um, before we get into listening part three, and we will be doing that in just a moment, welcome Carolina, our chat moderator. Uh, welcome Aval, uh, Masala, Karem, Ramelia. Nice to have you all with me. Um, Pay attention to um, our schedule here from uh, October 21st to October 30th. So we've got listening right now. Tomorrow uh, we have speaking, uh, part two, speaking, part three. Um, and uh, then on Sunday to Thursday, we've got no class. Um, usually we have class on Thursday 
but I'm away on a trip, so uh, no class this uh, coming Thursday. However, we will have classes uh, on Friday, Saturday on the 28th, 29th, and I will also have a light hall speaking class on the 30th, one day before Halloween. So join that class. It's a free class. There's the link for you in the uh, chat. Light Hall is awesome. It's a great platform for interacting with not only audio, but also video, just like the real IELTS speaking. So uh, check that out. And also check out our latest releases on the YouTube channel. Okay. All right. Um, students, listening strategies. Um, firstly, uh, when you uh, review the questions, visualize um, the information, okay? Um, during the time to review the questions, you should focus on two strategies, okay? Before the audio, you have some time to review questions. Before the audio, you should always review questions during that time. So during the time to review the questions before the audio, you need to apply uh, two strategies. Okay, uh, the first one is visualize the information. So see it, picture it in your mind. Okay, as soon as you start to get the topic from the words, the questions, the sentences, you need to visualize it. So visualize uh, the information that you are about to listen to. All right, so um, here is the uh, question set for today. Um, again, um, this section three, it's now called part three since 2020, they call it part three. So part three um, looks like this. Um, it says, okay, if an Egyptian's income was 10,000, how much would be given to the Pharaoh? Um, so immediately I visualize, right? So I am an Egyptian. Um, I have some kind of maybe fancy hat. Okay, and I'm doing the Egyptian walk. <laughs> and I'm giving some money uh, to the Pharaoh who's got maybe like a big crown type of thing. I don't know, it looks like a bishop, but uh, yeah, he's happy, he's getting some money. Um, all right, so there is the um, Egyptian Pharaoh. Um, all right, uh, Marco says, I am an artist. Marco, my art is for sale. Just one problem, it always disappears when I delete it. Um, so you have to take a screenshot, Marco, screenshot. But thank you for the compliment. Um, so visualize it. Egypt, ancient Egypt, you're giving some money to the Pharaoh. Um, okay, taxes. Um, so how do we visualize taxes? Uh, the first reason for taxes is you can visualize it. Um, you build schools with taxes, right? So you've got money and the money is going towards building a big old uh, school for everybody, for all the kids to go learn, okay? So tax money for schools. So you're seeing this, you're thinking about this, all right? So strategy one, visualize as best as you can the information that you are reviewing, okay? What is the second strategy? What do you think? So again, two big strategies that you should use uh, during the time to review questions before the audio, okay? So the uh, IELTS listening, they will say you have uh, 20 seconds or you have uh, some time to review questions one to five. And then you start reading questions one to five and then you start seeing it. So you're like, okay, I'm this guy giving money to the Pharaoh. Okay, there's tax money going to build a school. So I'm an Egyptian. Um, giving money to the Pharaoh. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm a politician. Um, giving money for a school. Uh, what's the other strategy? What do you think? So one is to visualize. What do you think is the other strategy that you should practice and that you should use during the real exam as well while you are reviewing questions? What do you think? Okay. 
Garab, I will definitely give you some tips for multiple choice questions as well. Okay, so there are some very good strategies for multiple choice questions. We will have some of those today, so I will teach you those. Mm -hmm. So Mohinur says predicting. Uh, predicting comes from visualizing. Uh, Masai says paraphrasing. Akira, do not underline keywords. Okay, Yanni says paraphrase. Yeah, uh, paraphrase, quickly paraphrase the uh, questions in your head uh, during the real exam and on paper at home while practicing okay and then somebody says underline keywords do not underline keywords in fact in the computer-based exam you can't underline keywords because as somebody said in a very funny way you'd be scratching the screen <laughs> so um, no do not do not underline keywords during the real exam, okay? Uh, because it's distracting. And it leads to more problems, okay? All right, uh, Subrato says synonyms. Yeah, um, Subrato, uh, synonyms are uh, paraphrasing, okay? So you want to quickly paraphrase the question in your head during the real exam um, or on paper at home while practicing because especially for part three and part four in the listening, the audio, um, or we can say it the other way, the questions are paraphrasing the audio. and do not use the same words, especially if many of the keywords are paraphrased. That's why it's not a good idea to underline keywords. They often paraphrase those keywords because otherwise it's too easy. So um, they paraphrase the audio um, and uh, do not use the same words as the questions, okay? All right, keep that in mind. Navpreet says, what is paraphrasing? Ooh, yes, Navpreet, uh, I get your emoji. Uh, Navpreet, that is a good place to start for your IELTS exam. So for IELTS, you must understand paraphrasing. You must understand and use. It's the most important strategy for your whole IELTS exam. For your IELTS, uh, you must understand and use paraphrasing uh, to get good scores. Okay, it's very important, it's a big topic. I can't go too much into that right now, but um, we will uh, over the course of other classes, okay? All right, um, so looking at uh, the, um, I just accidentally opened DaVinci Resolve, that's not gonna be good, all right. <laughs> okay, here we go, um, so, um, Paraphrasing means to say it in a different way, okay? So here, let me show you what I mean, okay? This uh, first question here for part three is, if an Egyptian income was 10,000, how much would be given to the Pharaoh? Now, in the audio, you usually don't have questions. You have statements, you have people talking. So you have to imagine how this will be said um, in the audio. Um, when the Egyptian earns um, 10,000 um, dollars, they uh, will pay this number uh, to the Pharaoh. Okay, so this would be the paraphrase of this statement, right? Okay, um, that's what you need to do. And uh, you want to do that for all of them. Um, try to paraphrase this one, students. So what's another way to say the first reason mentioned for taxes is? So how can we paraphrase this? How can we say this in another way? The first reason mentioned for taxes is. Okay. 
Uh, yes, Rocky, during the time, the introductory time, during the time to review questions, um, during the uh, time at the very end to check, you can move through your listening section in the paper-based and in the computer-based. So you can move around in uh, the different parts. Just make sure that you are doing that strategically. Yanni says, the purpose for paying some taxes. Um, Yanni, purpose is okay, but it doesn't mean the first reason. Okay. What, how can we say the first reason? What's another way to say first? Okay. Yeah, Chen, very good. So Chen says the primary purpose. for taxes is. Very nice, Chen. Good job. Thumbs up. Well done. Um, so that could be a paraphrase. The primary purpose for taxes is. Yep, it means the first reason for taxes is. Okay. All right, so you want to go through the entire listening and paraphrase. All right. Okay. Um, so, uh, let's do this. Let's uh, listen to this audio, answer the questions, and we will talk more strategy after. Now, students, as we answer these questions, please do not put the answers in the chat. Use a separate piece of paper or document so that everybody has a chance to answer on their own and we don't confuse other people with wrong answers. Okay, and then we'll share the answers afterwards together. So here, um, if you have access to our premium IELTS package, uh, it is going to be uh, CD3 and track three, as this is our third exam here and our third part of the listening, so it makes sense. So we're going over to aehelp.com. Again, uh, you can join the premium package with the big red button. It's the only way to access this audio. Uh, it's restricted to premium users. And then you get into your My uh, Student account where you have your computer-based practice tests, your interactive courses, and lots more. And then, of course, you have your audio CDs. So here we go to CD3. Everybody get ready to listen and answer. In the IELTS, you answer while you listen. Here we go, everyone. Now turn to section 3. Take some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Listening section 3. You will hear a public forum discussion between the moderator and two contributors, Dr. Philip McPhee and Dr. Ron Tatum, both political scientists at the local university, talking about the nature of taxes in society. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. First of all, I would like to thank Dr McPhee and Dr Tatum for taking time out of their busy lives to spend this evening with us. Thank you for having us. Dr McPhee, could you give us a little bit of the history of taxation? Certainly. Taxes have been around almost as long as civilization itself. There are records of taxes being collected by Egyptian pharaohs approximately 5,000 years ago. It was customary to give 20% of your production to the pharaoh, and those who evaded taxes were severely punished. Dr Tatum, what are the reasons for taxes? Well, there are essentially three major reasons for taxes. The first and most obvious reason is revenue. Governments need money, and taxes fulfil this need. The government then spends this tax revenue on investments that are good for society, such as health care, schools and roads. Funding the army would fall under this category as well. The second reason for taxation is for the redistribution of wealth. In simpler terms, this means taking money from the rich and giving it to the poor. Many societies do this out of a belief that it is the responsibility of the government to look after the poor people in society. I'll let Dr McPhee talk about the final reason for taxation, 
called repricing. Thank you, Dr. Tatton. Yes, the third main reason for taxation is called repricing, and by this we mean changing the price of a product to a different, generally higher price. This may sound quite strange, but if you bear with me, you'll see that it makes perfect sense. In general, products are allowed to be priced in a free market. That is to say, whoever can provide goods for the lowest price is the most successful. However, there are certain types of goods that we don't allow to go to the free market. In many countries, these are goods like tobacco and alcohol. These goods are subject to a repricing tax, which is used to discourage people from using the product. Also, these repricing taxes help offset the future medical costs associated with the people who use tobacco and alcohol excessively. You now have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen to the rest of the discussion and answer questions 27 to 30. Very well. Do you favour higher or lower taxes? I am a strong proponent of higher taxes. The reason for this is simply that it is easier to make money when you already have money. This gives a massive advantage to those people who may have inherited money or come from rich families because money is so much easier to gain for these people if used wisely. Taxing them seems only fair and for the greater good. This compensates the poorer sections of society who really have little or no hope to gain financial success. I understand Dr Tatum's position, but one has to be wary of the fact that if taxes are too high for businesses, then those businesses will leave the country in favour of countries with lower taxes. Of course, it would be nice if we could legislate a worldwide tax structure, but this is simply not attainable. And I'm sure by the time it becomes attainable, companies will likely have opportunities to leave for another planet with more favourable tax structure. <laughs> yes, you're right, Dr McPhee. We must always be mindful of staying competitive. It is like a tightrope we must walk between compensating those less fortunate and being able to stay competitive in the market. Because if we fail to be competitive, then tax revenue will dry up, resulting in no money at all for the lower economic classes. So this is an extremely difficult balancing act. Which leads to my next question. What is the future of taxation? I believe you will see higher taxes in 50 years than there are today, just as we have higher taxes today than 50 years ago. We will need even more money for projects like high-speed transit, new roads, new technologies. Also, with an ageing population, medical costs could soar in the near future, resulting in higher taxes to support this healthcare system. I think the future will be a lot like the present, walking the tightrope, as Dr Tatton mentioned. Where that takes us, I'm not sure. If I had to guess, I'd say higher taxes, for the reasons Dr Tatton outlined. However, another important variable to consider is whether free markets can really be allowed. That is the end of section three. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, students, and use that half minute to check your answers. I'm just going to stop the audio here before we start into section four or part four. We're going to do part four in a few minutes as well, but we will look at part three first and go through the uh, questions and answers together. And you probably saw me doing a few different steps there. Uh, and maybe some of you are wondering what I was doing and why I was doing it. Um, so I will explain that clearly as we get to the answers, okay? Uh, now, of course, if some of you are like, well, that was easy. Remember, though, that in the real exam, you don't have an Adrian sitting there guiding you through the audio, okay? So you have to do all of this on your own. Um, all right. Um, so let me just close that. There we go. Um, and uh, let's get back to the questions here. Okay, um, and as I go into question 21, I was looking at some of the chat that was going on as well between the members and the students. And Sarah, I see that you did a really good job in the IELTS. You achieved a good user of the English language. Uh, congratulations for that. 
Um, I hope that all of those scores will be uh, enough for your applications. Okay. Um, uh, Sarah, I was curious um, uh, what you got in the speaking section specifically, if you feel like sharing that. If not, you can just send me an email on it as well. But either way, uh, congratulations, Sarah. Good job. Um, all right, so back to the point here, everybody. Um, number 21, so taxes. If an Egyptian's income was 10,000, how much would be given to the Pharaoh? You had to fill in this blank, okay? Um, what was the answer here? So how much would be given to the Pharaoh if uh, the uh, income was 10,000? Hussein says... 2,000. Yes. Very good, Hussein. It is 2,000. Uh, we know that it's 2,000 because the answer was 20%. 20% of 2,000, or sorry, 20% of 10,000 is 2,000. So 20% of uh, 10,000 equals 2,000. So 2,000 is the correct answer. Um, 20%? They might mark that wrong, even though it seems correct. They want this number. That's why they're giving you the 10,000 piece, okay? They want that number because of the 10,000. So pay attention. Sometimes you have to, for one or two questions in the IELTS listening, you have to use a little bit of math, okay? So often, for one or two questions Uh, in the listening uh, section, you need to use a bit of math. So be careful with that, okay? All right. Thank you for giving me those specific um, scores, uh, Sarah. I really appreciate it. Okay, really good. Good job on the listening part, by the way. Yeah, writing and speaking tend to be the most challenging. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, number 22. The first reason mentioned for taxes is, and it's a, the simple one, right? Um, what is it? The, the answer comes quite quickly here. What was it? Hussein and Massey and Karem all agree that number 22 should be revenue. Yeah, income, right? Revenue. Revenue, income. The government needs to make money so they can pay for police, for military, fire department, building roads, building schools, right? Those cost a lot of money. So the first reason mentioned for taxes is Revenue, very good. Um, and then um, the professor quickly explains the second reason. So he says the second reason for taxes is known as something, taking money from the rich and giving it to the poor. Um, so what is the second reason for... Um, Massey says distribution of wealth. Massey, it says no more than two words. So if you write distribution of wealth, um, then you will get it wrong. Um, all you have to write is what Angel Jeanette wrote, redistribution. Redistribution. Okay. Yeah. So you take and you give out. You redistribute. Distribute means to hand out to different locations, places. Redistribute means to do it again. Okay. All right. Um, let's uh, go to the next one. Flow chart. Here we go. So here I was showing you with um, the annotation how to kind of go through this. Um, and uh, this was the third... Um, reason for taxes, okay? It's for kind of special types of products, right? So they give this example of products. Um, what kinds of products do they talk about? So what kind of products have this, uh, this special type of tax? 
okay? Good, Messi. Yeah, really pay attention to those uh, instructions. Uh, Fuang says alcohol, tobacco. Yes, exactly. Alcohol and tobacco. Okay. Um, Hemin, you're asking me for my band scores. Check out the videos on our YouTube channel. It, they're in um, the um, uh, list called My IELTS Journey. Check it out, Hemin. Okay. Yeah, this is repricing. It'll be a lot more fun than if I just tell you. Um, uh, Imad, it's called repricing. Yes, absolutely. And it's for alcohol and tobacco. So uh, which answer is repricing? 25, 24, 26. And notice, students, that here the answers did not necessarily come in the same order as the questions. So Akira says 24 is D. 25 is E. And 26 is B. Akira, unfortunately, you got all of those wrong. Yes, unboxing masala. Uh, 26 is repricing. Absolutely. So this is D. And interestingly, this is kind of the first one that you figured out. Okay. So here we have, uh, for this one, we have D as the correct answer. Here, let me let me do it this way. So we had uh, D for this one. Yeah, 26 was D. Uh, D is uh, repricing, okay? So subject to repricing tax, okay? Uh, what is subject to repricing tax? Number 25, um, Alexander, very good. Alexander and Hussein both agree that that would be alcohol. So alcohol is subject to uh, the uh, repricing tax. Um, 24, allowed to go to free market. So number 24, it's kind of weird where it's like we're going backwards, but it's the logic of this one, okay? And uh, Than Tran says 24 then should be E. Yes. So this is E. Now, this type of question, students, definitely review it because it should make sense. So you should see the logic. Okay, here we have the product. The product are the products are general goods. Okay, mobile phone, running shoes, um, allowed to go to the free market. That makes sense. Check right. Um, or the product is something different, something that causes problems for society like alcohol or tobacco. People get sick, people get violent, people do strange things. It's expensive. Uh, what happens? Repricing tax costs more because it needs more uh, reparation or more spending. So D, makes sense. Okay, check. All right. So uh, for flowcharts, be really careful. The information might come a little bit differently, a little bit random, not necessarily in the order of the audio per se. Okay, it will be just one group of information. And then you always want to check the logic for the flow chart, okay? So logic, logos, logic, very important, okay? All right, um, so check that out. All right. Then you had a little bit of time to uh, review the next questions. Now, this one's interesting, okay? 27 to 29 is what's called a multi-multiple choice question question all right so basically they say write the three correct letters a to f next to questions 27 to 29 in any order okay so the order doesn't matter as long as you have the right ones now here really pay attention to the question which three of the following are arguments given in favor of lower taxes 
okay? So the key here is lower taxes. Okay, not higher, but lower taxes. The professor at first is talking about higher taxes, but then the other professor starts talking about lower taxes. Now, the biggest trick for this type of question, okay, is to take notes. Okay, and I wrote that for you here. So instead of trying to read all of this information, it's too much to pay attention to. You need to catch the reasons. You need to pay attention to it. So I wrote down in my notes, and you, you can write notes in the computer-based exam as well. You have a, a piece of paper and a pen. So I wrote down, okay, businesses leave the country. Okay, no world tax. There's no tax for the world yet. And staying competitive. So being competitive is important. Okay, let me see if I can find these, all right? Okay, so A, um, it is easier to make money when you are already rich. That was definitely for higher taxes. So that one, no, right? Uh, businesses will leave the country if taxed too harshly. Does that match one of my notes? Okay. Does it match one of my notes? Yes, it does. Okay. So that is a correct answer. Boom. There you go. All right. Um, inheriting money requires hard work. Is that in my notes? Inheriting money requires no hard work? No. One's not in my notes. Okay. All right. A country must be able to stay competitive in the global market. That was in my notes, right? Okay. A worldwide tax structure can be implemented. They said it can't be. So no. Lower taxes in the end benefit everyone, including the poor. Not in my notes, but that's the last possible answer right because this one no a no so a no c no e no so we know that and i know that b and d were correct so f has to be correct so the correct answers there were b d and f okay one more time the most important strategy for the multi multiple choice questions is take some notes and catch the answers if you're staring at the answers and you hope that the answers will jump out at you you will get lost you will get confused and you will probably lose marks okay everybody got that okay akira it's not pdf it's bdf not pdf it's bdf okay so you need to take notes and you need to use your notes to solve the answer. Um, somebody said, well, what if I, I take notes and I'm trying to figure it out? Can I just do it at the end when I'm reviewing the questions? Yes, absolutely. So when they finish part three and they say, now you have some time to review the questions, you can answer this question at that time. Somebody very cleverly asked me that last class, okay? All right, I see the thumbs up. So it sounds like everybody's clear on that. Uh, multiple choice questions. Somebody was asking me earlier in the class, um, how do I solve multiple choice questions? Okay, the number one tip or strategy is you need to catch the answer. So the number one strategy is listen for the answer. Okay, <clears throat> the biggest mistake that students make is they stare at the choices. They're like looking at the choices like, okay, one of those is gonna pop. One of them is gonna pop, pop, there it goes. Um, no, <laughs> that's not, no, no. The answer doesn't go, but I am, I, here I am. Hey, it's me, look at me. Um, no, that's, that's, that doesn't work. That's just, um, the reason we, anybody know, like here's an interesting question, right? 
Anybody know why people stare at the questions thinking the right answer will jump out? There's a very good answer for this, and it's not your mistake or it's not your fault. It's the fault of the education system that we have, okay? Um, here's an interesting question for you. I've never asked this, but I wonder if anybody will be able to figure out the answer. Anybody know uh, why um, many people or many students uh, stare at the answer choices hoping uh, to catch a word and hoping that one correct answer will jump out at them while they are listening. So anybody know why this is such a common mistake for people in all parts of the world where they have a multiple choice test and they're looking, they're staring at the questions, hoping that one will jump out and then it doesn't. And then they're really upset and they don't know what's going on and they don't know which one's the right answer. Why do we fall into this trap as adults? Anybody know that? Humble says IELTS is not taught at schools. It's not true though. Um, we have multiple choice exams in schools. Um, so we do have multiple choice exams uh, in uh, even elementary school. So why is it so tricky? Um, Hawk says, I think it's because they think IELTS listening is very easy, so it will just pop in their face. No. Let me give you a hint, okay? Multiple choice exams from grade, let's say, 3 to grade 10. are different than uh, grade 11 uh, through university. Okay. Here's the million dollar question, how? So this is the reason so many people fall into issues with multiple choice questions. It's one of the most common questions I get from IELTS candidates is help me with multiple choice, help me with multiple choice in the reading and in the listening. So multiple choice exams from grade three, they usually don't have multiple choice exams in grade one and two, so that's why I said grade three. So from grade three, from about the age of nine or 10 until about the age of, let's say 15, um, those multiple choice exams are different than uh, grade 11, grade 12, and especially college and university. How? Very, so Yanni is on the right uh, track, okay? Um, Yanni says, because we need to use a lot more critical thinking um, for those advanced multiple choice tests, okay? Exactly, okay? So um, grade uh, three to 10, multiple choice exams uh, often just need you to match information, like red equals red, okay? And so um, students get into this habit. They're like, oh, this is great. Audio said red, question said red, red is red, A is the right answer, bada bing, bada bang. Next one, I love it. I don't even have to think, okay? Can I recognize that pattern, right? Um, so that's what happens. And then students um, get into uh, a world of problems when they get into especially university level uh, multiple choice exams, okay? So, but I'm going to say grade 11 to university. MC exams need true knowledge of information and critical thinking. 
the MCQ, so the multiple choice questions, use not only paraphrasing, but global information to identify the best answer. Okay, grade three to 10 multiple choice exams, one correct answer, the rest are wrong. University level multiple choice uh, questions, more than one possible correct answer, you are looking for the best answer, okay? Those are big differences, all right? Now, what about the IELTS, right? So you're probably like, well, what about the IELTS exam, right? Is it grade three to 10 or is it grade 11? Good question, right? So how about IELTS, right? And this is where so many IELTS teachers and uh, videos are confused too, and they don't understand it clearly. But here is the reality, okay? How about IELTS? So IELTS, early questions, in part one, will be kind of like uh, grade three uh, to 10 you may be able to match the audio with the answer. And there is only one correct answer. However, as you progress, the MCQ questions, so the multiple choice questions, become college level. And of course, it's because they're looking for band seven to nine. So, not zero, <laughs> nine. Uh, so they have more than one right answer. They are longer and they need global understanding. Global understanding means that you need to understand multiple pieces of the audio to get the right answer, okay? So, does everybody now kind of get how the multiple choice questions work and why they're so tricky? People tend to think multiple choice is multiple choice, right? But it's not. Multiple choice question engineering is not just one type of uh, skill or information. Okay, multiple choice can test your ability to just simply match information, red goes with red, or it can test your highest ability of understanding lots of information, analyzing that information, thinking critically about that information, and identifying the best possible choice for that information, right? And of course, doing that in English, right? Okay. So um, that's what you have to think about as you plan and study for your IELTS exam. And you can't just take that advice from videos or from teachers where it's like underline keywords. Obviously, underlining keywords will not be effective for more advanced types of multiple choice questions. Okay, so clearly. Uh, just under underlining keywords will not work for many multiple choice questions, okay? You must hear and identify the right answer, okay? And there's lots of different ways to do that. Nudgemul says, lots of hearts for that. You've got lots of thumbs up. Okay, so I digressed. I went into a lot of detail there for you. As some of you might have guessed from that, one of my uh, areas of study in university was psychometrics. Psychometrics is the science of measuring human thinking. And part of that is how to engineer exams, how to engineer multiple choice tests. And it's that knowledge that we put into our uh, websites like uh, glshelp.com 
and uh, aehelp.com. So definitely join these websites because that's the kind of knowledge we use to create your learning material. Okay, um, so let's uh, now get to part four. Let's listen for part four. Let's do part four together, and then we will go through the answers together. Okay, everyone, here we go. So again, don't put your answers in the chat. Um, put it into a separate document. We will go over them together afterwards. Here is listening part four. Listen and answer. Here we go. Now turn to section four. Take some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Listening section 4. You will hear a lecture about English scientist Isaac Newton. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Today we are going to discuss the life and achievements of the famous English scientist Sir Isaac Newton. Many consider Newton to be the most brilliant man to have ever lived and many consider his achievements the greatest ever achieved by one man. Newton himself was not so sure as he famously told his followers, if I have seen further it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. While it may be true that he built upon the foundation of scientists before him, he still managed to see further than anyone else had, and to this day his accomplishments stand the test of time. Isaac Newton was born in England in 1643. He studied at the King's School in Grantham from age 12 to 17. After leaving school, his mother tried to make him into a farmer, but that was not going to be sufficient for young Isaac. A year later, in 1661, on the recommendation of one of his teachers at the King's School in Grantham, Newton was admitted to Trinity College in Cambridge, where he eventually became a teacher six years later. Newton is perhaps most famous for his work on gravity. A well-known story says that Newton realised the nature of gravity while he was sitting under a tree and an apple fell on his head. This story may or may not be true, but the underlying principle is valuable. Newton made the astonishing discovery that the same force that makes an apple fall to the earth also makes the earth revolve around the sun and the moon revolve around the earth. Until this time, scientists such as René Descartes and Gottfried Leibniz had believed that the planets moved in some sort of matter, something they called an ether. Newton demonstrated that no such ether was required. Descartes and Leibniz also had little explanation for why apples fall to the earth. Newton's theory accounted for this almost perfectly. During the 20th century, Newton's theory came under attack by the German physicist Albert Einstein, whose theory of relativity was said to replace Newton's theory of gravitation. This is simply not true. Einstein's theory is a landmark achievement in science, but it did not replace Newton's theory, it merely improved it. To picture this, think of a smooth ball, perhaps a billiard ball. In this experiment of the mind, Newton tells us that the ball is smooth. However, Einstein says that the ball has small imperfections, dents, cuts and scrapes. Who is right? The answer is both of them. Newton is correct on a macroscopic scale. When we look at the ball from a distance, the ball is smooth. However, Einstein is correct as well. The ball does have imperfections. He is correct on a macroscopic and a microscopic scale. Another of Newton's important achievements is the reflecting telescope. Previously, Galileo had used lenses to construct his telescope but Newton was the first to use mirrors in a telescope. Today's telescopes are almost all made of mirrors as opposed to lenses, which again speaks to Newton's brilliance. There are a number of reasons the mirror is an improvement over the lens in telescopes. First, mirrors do not warp as easily as lenses do, and by that I mean that lenses can lose their shape in hot or cold weather quite easily. Second, telescopes with mirrors take up less space because of their shorter focal distance. Third, 
Telescopes with mirrors can be built far larger because the mirrors themselves can be built larger. An achievement of Newton's that must not be overlooked is Newton's discovery of calculus. Although the discovery was not without controversy, Gottfried Leibniz also claims to have invented calculus at approximately the same time. Nobody really knows the truth, but it is accepted that they discovered it separately. In any case, it was a brilliant achievement by both scientists. Newton died in March 1727 and his body was laid to rest at Westminster Abbey in London in a famous above ground tomb. He was 84. That is the end. All right, and that's the end of part four and then you have some time to review. Notice how in part four, <clears throat> no breaks. You just have to go, 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 right? They're testing for band eight, band nine, seeing who can answer all of those questions well. All right, students, so um, going to the questions now. Again, I kind of guided you so you could kind of follow the logic and the thinking with the highlighter and the annotation, okay? And when you're practicing at home, that's your goal to interpret the audio while you're listening. Notice how here in the beginning, um, I paid attention to some key parts like numbers and names. So 1643. King's School in Grantham. The reason I did that is that really helps to position me in the audio. So when I'm listening, I know where they are in the audio. With a flow chart, that's really important because it's easy to get lost. And if you get lost, you start missing answers. Okay. So Isaac Newton was born 1643. Studies at King's School in Grantham from the age of something to something. So um, when does um, uh, he study? So 12, 17. Very good, Ipshita. Yeah, so just two numbers. 12 and then comma 17. You don't even need the two. Okay, it's just two words or numbers. We've got two numbers. Punctuation doesn't matter. So 12 and 17. Both of those in your paper-based exam has to go for... Uh, question 31. Okay, and then um, Isaac leaves school and mother attempts, they don't say attempts, they say mother tries to make him into uh, something very different from what he becomes, right? Yanni yeah, says, farmer, um, everybody good answers, farmer, watch the spelling, humble uh, F W few, far more with an O, no, farmer with an E, right? Farm, er. Okay. Yeah, it tries to make him a farmer. And then 1661, on the recommendation of his teachers, he's admitted to Trinity College. Again, this helps me position in the audio. Six years after beginning, Newton becomes a something. What does he become? Yeah, Fong, very good, a teacher. Smart guy. Becomes a teacher. There. Okay. All right, <clears throat> and then we had this interesting uh, type of question where we had to match the person to their achievement. And you have these in both the listening and the reading section. So notice how here I was taking some notes of who was doing what, and that's a good way to do it. So it's just kind of like the multi-multiple choice because that's kind of what it is. So each of these are a choice for each of these questions, right? So it's like a multiple choice type question presented a little bit of a different way. So we had to figure out who's who among these scientists. Okay, uh, number 34, believed that planets moved in an ether. Um, rock Kia says that was C. Yeah, I took a note for that, right? I wrote down the word ether. So that was definitely C. Good. Okay. Um, and then developed a theory which was thought to replace the earlier theory of gravity. Well, importantly, we learned that the theory of gravity came from Newton. 
And the person who maybe replaced that, but really didn't, was Einstein with the theory of relativity, right? E equals mc squared, right? Okay, so 35 was D. 36, the tricky one, in the experiment of the mind, tells us the billiard ball is smooth. So they talked about Newton and they talked about Einstein and the billiard ball. So the ball is smooth or the ball has scratches and mistakes on it. One of them said it's smooth. One of them said it's not smooth. The person who said it was smooth is D or sorry, um, is B. It's uh, Newton. Okay. So Newton said it's smooth. Einstein said it's not smooth. Okay, so C, D, B. Um, and then here, be really careful of the negative here. Use not mirrors, right? The negative. Use not mirrors, but lenses. In the construction of the telescope, Ipshita Fuang agree that that was... Yanni agrees that was A. That was Galileo, the famous Italian scientist, astronomer. Okay. Um, Galileo. So the correct answers were C, D, B, A, A. And notice how I use notes for that. Again, this is not the type of multiple choice that you can use or you can do by just trying to uh, have the answers jump out. Okay. All right. Uh, some fill in the blanks here, more about telescopes, right? So uh, no more than two words. Telescopes with lenses cannot be built as large as telescopes with mirrors because large lenses tend to something. They gave two answers here that are okay. Rocky says lose shape. Yeah, lose shape is correct. They tend to lose shape or warp. If you heard the word warp and you added warp, warp would be okay as well. Munchy, 1-0, lose, not loose, careful. Loose is a different word, L-O-O-S-E is loose, okay. Gracie, very good, 38, warp, excellent. Telescopes with mirrors take up less space because of their reduced, what? So telescopes with mirrors take up less space because of their reduced focal distance. Yes. Uh, very nice. Absolutely. Focal distance or focal length is okay as well. Both are okay. Focal length, focal distance. Length, distance, paraphrase, both are mentioned. They'll take both, okay? All right, nicely done. Last one. I took some notes here, so it should be easy to answer 40 as long as you got that. Which statement is true? And these were my notes here. So all I have to do is match it. A, Newton and Leibniz discovered calculus together. No, because it does not match, right? Okay, uh, Newton and Leibniz discovered calculus separately during the same time period. Perfecto, right? So the answer is B, obviously. Okay. Again, notes and understanding and logic for multiple choice questions. That's what you're going for. Uh, students, um, well done. A uh, question, how many did you get correct from 40? So if you were in the class last week and you did part one and part two and you remember how many you got correct, if you're just continuing, that class then uh, figure out how many you got correct from uh, 40 okay if you're just counting from 20 your goal should be 12 or better okay 12 or better masala says i got 34 masala on our website at the very bottom there's a score calculator and you can put that 34 in there and it will give you your band score. It will say you got a 7.5 if you got 34. 
So, um, Sarah, I don't know if you're still in the class, but you said you got 30 or you got 7.5 on the listening. So it means you got at least, I don't know what the minimum is for 7.5. Let's check it out. Yeah. So you got at least 32 correct out of 40, Sarah. It's awesome. Okay. All right. So 34 is good. Rocky, 38 is going to be an 8.5. Okay, very good. Uh, Sunjarbeck, 36. I think you're just into the band eight range. 36, eight, yes. Okay, Harjot says 23. Harjot, a 23 is a band six. Okay, it's not bad, Harjot. I mean, band six, it's a good start. Ota Beck, you got 7.5, just 7.5. Almost, one more question wrong, Ota Beck, and it's a seven. Okay, so it looks like a lot of you did quite well. That's fantastic. Kundan says 28. Kundan, 28 is a band 6.5. So it's not terrible, all right? Okay, so again, that's uh, on our website and students to get all of our listening exams, materials, interactive courses, all of our HD videos, join the premium package, click that big uh, red button there that's just above my head. It's a one-time payment it's for a lifetime. You can keep studying, learning English, even after IELTS. So great investment for your English learning. We're always putting new videos, materials up there. So yeah, use us for learning. Carolina, thanks for helping out in the chat. Um, and um, everybody else, thank you for your uh, contributions, interactions. That's what makes this class so much fun. Uh, make sure to uh, come back tomorrow for the speaking sessions. Make sure to register for that light hall class that we have coming up for you on the 30th. Keep in mind that next week, uh, no class on Thursday, but we have class Friday and Saturday. Uh, that's it for this class and good job on the listening. Remember those tips. Remember that interesting information about multiple choice question exams not all being the same. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from beautiful Victoria here on the Pacific side of Canada. Much love to all of you wherever you are. Continue to have a great weekend and I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye everyone.